What's up, everybody? It's your favorite world eater's favorite nerd, and today we are looking at the Studio Cell Unicron. I don't know what they called it. We gotta get through this transformation. This is on loan to me from Robert D. He wrote me a poem asking me that I didn't break it, so hopefully I won't break it. A lot of little bits, a lot of little pieces, a lot of things to talk about, but in order to do so, we gotta start with accessories. So he comes with these two planet mode mouth eating bits. They are entirely on a translucent piece of plastic, so be mindful, but that also means everything's painted on them. The kind of blue gray, whatever this color is, let's just call it gray, okay? Because we're gonna talk about it a lot during the review. This gray is painted on and this orange, yellow, let's just say orange, orange is painted on. So both are painted on fully. Sculpted well enough, tons of little sculpted detail and stuff throughout. Looks really quite good, honestly. And then you got the little teeth. You know, he's part of the cavity creeps, you know what I mean? Dangerous gang. There it is. Now to attach those to his shoulders, you'll need one of these two pieces, which it also comes with. And you just take your mouth there, so to speak, take this bit, plug it into the shoulder, and you're good to go. The claw mouth will fit at the front of the planet mode, or using the same adapter, you could plug them into the side as well. He also comes with these two effects. They're just a translucent kind of orange. They have tabs. They can do a number of things, one of which being locked together like this. You can also take them and apply them to your shoulder pieces using the same pegs and holes that are in the shoulders. You can also use them to sit the planet mode on. Now you can also use one and then this upside down as a display base, and then you can use this one and plug it in to the mouth. So he's like sucking, sucking up the planet. He comes with a number of different panel swap out options so that you can give a more cohesive look in planet mode. As a heads up, some require pin punch methods in order to swap them out. So I wouldn't go crazy unless you really want that look to look a certain way in planet mode. He also comes with a number of screw covers. Uh, he has a number of holes throughout and we're, you know, to assemble them. So if you want to cover down on those screws, you got also got the colors. You even got a little screwdriver. You know, that's my favorite third party accessory ever. Tons of different sizes, shapes, etc. So you can have a very finished look. You get a number of these little kind of clips and towers, etc. to give them like all the kind of spiky appearance. So you have them, uh, they clip on. I'll show you some places where they go and you get uh, quite a few, quite a few of them, I should say. And they sort of clip on with C clips all along the bot, and then you can kind of have them up or fold them down as need be. Here's some on the forearm, etc. And of course, you want your add-on parts, right? So what you do is these are interlocked. You take them, pull this side up, the right side up. As you do so, you'll notice that you have these teeth. Let me open this up a bit. <clears throat> so flip your teeth up. There's a double hinge here. Rotate on the double hinge to the back. As you do so, flip the teeth back down and that will sit nicely along the back side of the collar. Same for this side. There we go. And then take your head, so to speak, insert. The head will also fit inside planet mode in the mouth so that you can use the light up feature, but I'm having problems getting this thing to stay together anyway, so I'm not gonna do it, but it does fit. And for the wings, you do the same thing as you do with the little pegs and just plug them straight in and then you can articulate them out. They'll swivel here and they will separate if you so desire and you can kind of just have them any which way your little heart desires within reason, of course. This will even move a little bit, but you kind of don't get a whole ton of a lot there. To get the rings into planet mode, I advise that you take and connect one side of the rings, which you can't see right now, but uh, I'll show you how to do it. And sort of bring them all together and start pegging into the sides and then connect the fourth ring after you've got, you know, a few of them hooked up and make sure that all this stuff is secured, you know, alongside. Now you guys know I don't really focus on packaging at all, but I do think it's interesting the way that this is packaged. 
like that for the most part what sits on a shelf obviously this is the back and it shows a little bit more but there's not one full image of the robot not one full image of the planet and for the most part what you see on a shelf is all these little creatures this kind of ties into the drama that we've heard about surrounding zeta surrounding hasbro surrounding haslab surrounding uh unicron so just one of those things i found interesting so let's talk about the figure. We're going to kind of go piece by piece. First of all, there's a misleading amount of paint on this guy. He's really well painted. So this lower part of the helmet is all painted with the gray. And then I don't think the orange is painted there. I think the face is painted. We've already kind of talked about the head a bit, though. Um, and then, of course, the, the, the teeth here collapse. You can you have the jaw. Once again, we've already spoken about. But you get it. As you saw, it's just a cylinder. Connected to a ball peg, so it acts as a single ball peg. And you can get a good bit down, which is nice. Decent, nah, nothing really up. Side to side is fine. A little bit of confused dog look. And that's about it. The eyes look great, but like I said, we've already kind of talked about the head and wings in great detail. We're not even going to cover the wings right now for the sake of convenience of going through this bot because of his size. So some real decent sculpt work going on down here in the abdomen and torso area and chest, all of the line work. The These pieces are all pop-out pieces. That's painted silver. This is translucent with silver at the base. And then we have the red translucent there for the chest, which looks great. And then the gray is painted on there. The orange is painted there. I believe this blue is painted as well. You get a ratcheted swivel and an ab crunch on this fella. So pretty impressive feat of engineering. For the shoulder, we have a die cast double hinge inside of the chest. You can bring that away from the body and then maneuver the arm out to get you 90 degrees up. The universal section of it will get you a ratchet 360 around. And I just wanna make sure that there's not a way to get a butterfly. It doesn't appear to be. We have a gray paint deco on the shoulders and some orange on the bicep, it looks like. And they're, these might even be painted as well. I can't really tell. I don't think so, though. We have a ratcheted bicep swivel. We have a ratcheted double hinge elbow. They get you almost the full run. I'd say we give it to them, close enough. I think this is painted. Uh, I can see it, yep. And then we have the wrist, ratcheted swivel. Thumb is on a ball peg with a hinge at the end. And then all of the fingers are individually articulated with a ball peg at the base and then a pinned hinge for the secondary knuckle. Or they might not be pinned. No, they are. Pinned hinge for the secondary and tertiary knuckle. So they're completely uh, independently articulated and uh, pretty well done, to be fair. Other arm is the same. For the hips, you have hip skirts here. Once again, nicely painted. The orange is painted on and we have silver painted on inside the little doodad there. Same for this. I believe this is painted as well because you look at the other side of the blue it doesn't have the same feeling so that light blue is definitely painted and then we have the hips so let's get all of our hip skirts out of the way big old ratcheted joint for the full van dam pretty much full forward and full back thigh swivel single hinge knee that gets you 90 degrees. You do get a little break here in the thigh, so you can kind of cheat this as a double uh, jointed knee. It's not technically, but if you get it to work, who cares if it looks good, you know what I mean? Uh, for the lower legs, I'll say that this comes packaged detached, these kneecaps here, and they're kind of a pain to get together. So just be mindful. I've um, pushed them as far as I'm comfortable pushing them. Uh, you do get another swivel down here that's ratcheted for the lower legs, so kind of acts as an ankle swivel, but you also get the ankle swivel, so just a bit redundant. All of this is painted and looks good. Yellow painted, all the little details, some silver details throughout. The back is really nicely sculpted and tons of little like city, you know, looks and stuff. It's, I mean, they did a good job. Even those two pistons here on the back of the thighs, like you wouldn't normally see those, but they painted them, so good, good on them. Uh, for the ankles, you basically get a toe tilt down at multiple hinges, a toe tilt up, and then a rocker that's a little on the limited side, but it is there. And there he is from the back. So, yeah, pretty clean, pretty impressive.
size comparison wise, there's not really a scale that's going to ever make sense with Unicron, right? But it's just to give an idea of what it would feel like or what would feel right to you. There it is with a smaller Legends, a larger Legends, a Chug, and a MP Prime kind of scaled figures. Hopefully this gives you somewhat of an idea of what you're working with. I'll show you one other thing. So there it is next to Zeta's Superion. And he's probably about an inch shorter. And this is where um, I kind of have to jump ship size-wise because it just will look weird with my collection. Definitely a personal preference kind of thing. Definitely, uh, you know, kind of not every shoe fits every foot situation, but it's kind of the cards that I'm dealing with in regards to the hand I'm playing. So let's get them transformed. I just put the headpiece back the way it was. I took off the head and the wings for the sake of the review and then I flip those teeth out at the top. So open up his chest and there's some cool sculpted detail and stuff in here. <clears throat> These are on all sorts of hinges and such. You can bring this out and you'll be able to see like a lot of like, I don't know, kind of like movie little Easter eggs and such. And then you can flip this horn to the other side. This has to come up and over, and it will sit alongside the top of where the uh, teeth were. And we're gonna do the same thing on the uh, back of the unit. So, open up this and this, flip out this piece up and over connect the horn and bring it up alongside and then you'll be able to see there's like little tabs and you just want to connect them into the sides here on all four sides of your your two flip flaps that you just pulled up. Now there's a lot of swiveling that needs to go on here and I'm trying to make sense of the instructions. I'm not sure if the exact rotation matters because they're kind of symmetrical, the top half of the body anyway. It's like identical on the front as it is the back, but we're gonna try our best. So this top section here where the arm pieces connect, we're going to move that 90 degrees. Now we're looking at if everything's squared away, the back of the hands and the open cavity there. Then you wanna open up the pelvis piece and you wanna take your hip skirt section and move that around so that it sits in the middle and connects downward into the pelvis and you do have a little wiggle room for these double hinges and then they should close back up. On the hip skirts, unfurl them from the side and then there's another two pieces to be unfurled once again for the side and the top. So same thing on this side, unfurl, unfurl and unfurl. <clears throat> You're gonna wanna do that here as well. Open, open open a lot of flip flaps here then you have these yellow pieces that make up the abdomen you want to take those out those are also on double hinges open those up same for the other side good grief and then you want him to come out and do the full van dam so just bring the legs all the way out to the side. Be mindful of your flip flaps and make them do a split on the ground. Now you have to get these legs situated away. So there's, think of it in three sections. The hip section, you want to see the joint. So just rotate around until you see the joint. This section, you want to see the pistons that are painted, you see? And then for the shin, you want to see the knees. If you have joint, piston, uh, knees, you're in the right spot. Same here, joint.
piston. And then knees. And then you have some prep work here. So take your toes and just fold them down until you can't fold them anymore. Take these, bring them out, flip these around so that it forms kind of a more uh, concise panel. You're going to want to do that on the opposite side as well. And you're going to also want to open up these knee uh, caps. To be fair, uh, these knee caps have probably, if they're anything like mine anyway, have wanted to kind of open all the time. So you don't have to worry too much about that. And then the last thing you want to do is untab these two sections here from one another, split the difference as it were. Take this section here, spin that, rotate it around until you can tab them all back together using these tabs to kind of form a singular panel back here as well. So, uh, just gotta get that up and around. Yeah, there. Let's just do that on this side too. Do you know how to eat an elephant? One bite at a time. So take the panel out, flip them around so that they're more cohesive. Same thing on this side, more cohesive. Split your knee cap and fold your toe up. One, two, three. QC, which I found interesting. Uh, you want to split your situation here, split the difference as it were. Come around. Flip this so that you get it oriented where these tabs are going to line up with the corresponding slots on both sides. Now on the underside, I have it spun around here. You're not supposed to spin it around. I'm just doing it so I can show you easily. You take this flip flap. There's another one hidden up in here. Take that out. Spin that around. And... Connect those, and then take this piece, let me get it down here for a second, take this piece and rotate this stuff around until uh, the kind of planet pieces start to line up. Should be pretty obvious. Same here, one panel, two panels, spin this around, tab it together, and then orient your foot so that it makes sense. I ended up missing a step before I went to collapse all this. This section here separates from this section. They do mention it in the instructions. I just missed it because it's kind of subtle. Uh, and it's not necessarily easy. I found that the best way to get it is to kind of grab where these shoulders like extend the shoulders out and grab in there and then push down and extend it. It's not, it's, it was a pain. And now we have to kind of start collapsing. So, uh, all right. You want to bring this up and down so that this piece sits there. Now on the bottom, if you can see, can you, all right. You want to grab this little piece and flip that out. I might need a spudger. Continue to collapse. The thigh piece will start to collapse into the shin piece. Resistance and I don't know where it is and I'm scared to death Because you got to make sure that all this stuff is clear So And I know it's a pain I know it's a pain to watch if it makes you feel any better. It's a pain to do All right now on the uh, hold on one second. So this is the underside. It's a little bit more of a wider view. And what you got to do is just start to collapse all the panels into the proper location. And it's 
Um, it's a little challenging to show, but uh, there's those. Let's see if I can't get that in a little better. I'm not sure if I can. Um, here's another one. And this tab here is going to go into that corresponding. Sl it's it's honestly it's a lot more intuitive than it kind of seems. But uh, then I say okay, so there we go, because it, it all starts to kind of line up properly, you know. And it's like a puzzle, like in the in the literal sense, where like certain pieces only really fit in certain places, and you just sort of keep pushing until you find it, keep working until it works. That's the underside of one side. Let's look at the top side. And then here's the top side. You got this piece that'll come out, spin around, and then lock in to the foot. Just sort of tighten all this stuff up. You got your chest piece. That'll swing around, clip into there. And then this piece down here, We'll clip in, I'm sorry, this goes underneath to the chest piece, and then this will come up and clip in on the side. And it's just all these, you know, the elements of the shell, right? And then we have the same thing on the other side. So we'll leave this undone. We'll bring the chest around. The chest will grab a hold of this side, these two side panels here and this piece will come let's see out and around and grab onto there one tab into the side and one tab underneath that chest and then make sure that all this stuff is tightened up i'll tighten up this side and then we'll start working on the other side bring your bend at your knee rather and then we got to start putting together our tabs so we have this that's all gonna come up and over this is gonna come up and over the chest piece comes out and over this piece comes off spins around tabs into the foot this piece comes out and it's just i mean it's a nightmare i'm not gonna lie to you it's it's a complete nightmare um just in the sense of kind of getting it all lined up there these two and there and there that's the general gist i'll connect all the pieces the best i can and we'll move on i got it uh for the most part there's the key i have found is there's and i didn't even get this one quite right if you, there's two white tabs inside of there they plug into the heel of the foot if you can get that, it all starts to work. It is extremely frustrating. Moving on to the next frustrating piece is this forearm. So you open up these flaps here and then you untab this. Now I've only done it once and mine is pretty much broken here, this little tab. Now that's not the only thing that's broken on this guy throughout this transformation, but I'll get back to that at the final thoughts. So take the fist, tuck that in and then move this down and this will plug in using this tab here and then spin your forearm pieces so we're going to do that again and try not to break it no promises untab untab i just can't i can feel it oh my god like you have to be so careful it's this tab here and you have to be very, very careful. That's where it goes in. Look at the angle it has to get in order to get in there, so to speak. Nightmare. Nightmare sauce. All right. Close up your hands. Fold them in. Plug by spinning this around. 
bringing it back down so that the spikes are showing and then spin these around so your other spikes are showing. So when you think things can't get any worse, open up your shoulder and flip this down and then adjust your shoulder as need be so that you can get full access to that. Open these up. And then you want to spin this section so that it comes down and fills in the elbow gap. And then bring this section down. And then you gotta get uh, all of this up into here using your shoulder, elbow, etc. And then flip your flaps. As you can see, not too terribly awful, but now I'm gonna go through and clean up all these tabs and everything. They're pretty obviously, or obviously, they're pretty obvious where they go in. I'll be back in a minute. And now the other section. So we're gonna untad these parts here from the back and they suck, boom, boom. Flip this section down. Spin it. I forgot a step on the other side to show you guys anyway. Um, so spin this. As you spin it, there's these two white clips here. I can't get them to tab in anyway, but if you push on the opposite side, you should be able to get them to swing through, so to speak. Come down. Open. Open. Boom, and then once again, it's just a matter of getting it lined up and in place. I just broke something else. I would guess anyway. I didn't see it, I'll have to look. I don't see where it is. See, there's all these little like city bits and stuff up here. You see I've broken one here. Um, Oh no, it was just that that spot there. So, uh, so it was just that one that was almost broken anyway. Okay. All right. And then get it in, tab up all these. These white clips are supposed to grab these metal sections. So like I said, I'll tab all this in so you gotta sit here and look at it and we'll get back. And then the final step is to take this little circular disc here and bring it down and then attach it onto this forearm here but like I don't even have like the more I mess with it the more panels are coming undone I'm going to clean it up the best I can and we'll take a look at it so there it is in sort of planet mode and like I honestly I had it cleaner before I started adding the ring and everything it's like the more I touch it the worse it gets these teeth do move and stuff I think it's best to just keep them closed and add this little ditty on there like we showed earlier but um, I think that's a better looking option. But, you know, I, my, I mean, it's, it's coming so far apart as I mess with it that like who knows if I can even get it to stay now. But yeah, you know, look, I'm sure if you have all day all the patience and tolerance in the world to kind of get all these panels stuck together that it will look great. You know, I've seen pictures of it where it looks great. So I'm guessing it's something that works. It's just it's a lot of things that have to line up just right. You know, and I'm not sure that it's worth it, uh, like just to get here. But, um, I mean, we all should have known it was gonna be challenging, right? It has to turn into a circle. Not a square that has four sides or a triangle that has three corners, but a circle. And you can see like this whole section has come up. And the problem is like, as you go to push this section in, like this section will start popping out and then you kind of push this section and then that section, it's like, it's like whack-a-mole, but the transformer version. And you see, I didn't even get that little clip out there. I couldn't even get that one in. So I'm not sure what difference it makes, but yeah, I'm gonna be honest with you. It's probably the most frustrating transformation I've ever looked at. Uh, the, the reigning champ before this guy was the G creation Optimus Prime. This one is now the winner. This is a, a real pain to deal with. Theoretically, it works just fine when it works just fine. I'm not in, the, in that group, surprising or not so to, uh, to folks. But yeah, I'm sure it looks great when you 
<laughs> can get it all lined up, but good luck. I would guess that most reviews do it from planet mode to robot mode. That would be the safe way to do it. It would probably be pretty interesting to see a reviewer do it from robot mode to planet mode without taking any cuts, just so you can get an idea of just how frustrating it is. And I broke two pieces during it that I got to call and explain after this is over and then see what he wants to do. I'm, I mean, I'm happy to buy it from him, but see what he wants to do. So yeah, I mean, that's it. Yeah, whatever. There it is with Tiger Tracks. Final thoughts wise, let's start with the negatives. Objectively speaking, it needs a wider range of ankle rocker. The knee pads that form the knee don't go together smoothly, have a hard time staying stuck together, and the thigh has a hard time locking into place at the knee. The little buttons all over them, like the translucent plastic with the silver bits underneath, have a tendency to pop off. I had a few pop off during the review. And the horns and spikes have a tendency to pop off as well. Now, I have some subjective criticisms as well. I think that the transformation is super frustrating. Like I said, it is without a doubt the most frustrating transformation I've ever looked at in my six years of doing this. It's the chaos bringer for real. I broke two things during it. All those little small cityscape pieces that sit alongside it. It's a very cool touch. It's a very cool aesthetic cue. However, they break and I broke one. And then I broke that one locking mechanism that locks that series of panels into the forearm. That's just poorly designed. That would be objective as well. And yeah, that's about it. Yeah, well, you know, you, and, and one last thing, it's, it's awfully small. You know, I, I, unless it's a standalone display piece, I'm not sure where this kind of works. Except planet mode. But good luck getting it there and good luck making it look good. Like I said, I'm sure it's possible. I wouldn't want to be the one to do it though. Don't hire me to do it. You'll be disappointed. As far as the materials, I think it's important to note that they are a bit softer in the sense where they have a bit more give. Now normally I would think, well, this might allow some kind of forgiveness in regard to transformation. But in my experience, the only thing that it has provided is a more frustrating experience of things remaining remaining tab and stuck in. But I can see it going the other way as well, just depending on how well you have everything lined up. Positives wise, the good news is most of the positives come through in robot mode. Robot mode is clean, it's sleek, it's accurate, it's cool, it's articulated, it has presence, it's painted, it's sculpted well, it's beautiful. So the action figure element of this works extremely well. I think when it comes to the transformation element, it should have been one of those just because we focused so long on making sure that we could, we didn't stop to think if we should. It is unpleasant. It is an unpleasant experience, in my opinion. It's subjective, of course, but I can only speak to my experience. I can't wait to get this out of my house. But the robot mode is absolutely outstanding, stunning, beautiful, etc. I think it looks perfect. So it all depends on how important the transformation element is to you and how important the planet mode element is to you, in my opinion. Hope that helps. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.